Welcome to another HDPR Live. I'm your host, Jamie Urban. Today, we have David Willett from ProSite Specialty Insurance. David, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for being on HDPR Live. Hey, Jamie, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, love uh, to participate and uh, be able to share with your audience. Now, you've worked in automotive with some of the largest automakers in the world, and now you're bringing the, your expertise to the heavy-duty trucking industry. Uh, what prompted that move? Well, you know, really, I, I've, I've admired this industry and worked with them heavily in the mid-1990s uh, up to um, almost the 2008-2009 range, um, insuring many of them, parts distributors, uh, heavy-duty parts distributors, heavy-duty repairers. And I, I relate well to this group, uh, as many in the automotive uh, space, because uh, um, a lot of times they're entrepreneurs, people who uh, grew up um, – you know, working with their hands with the heavy machinery equipment. My dad, my dad was a, a typesetter or a printer with the old heavy metal equipment, uh, machinery, a lot of rags in his office that were uh, grease and ink on them. But uh, in other words, you earned your business based on building your brand by uh, being someone who cares, someone who um, is reliable and creates value. And that's, that's what the people in this industry do. They do that. Uh, consistently over and over again. So I, I love being able to work and relate with them. Yeah, it is a great industry. I've enjoyed working in it myself for 22 years now. If we sell heavy-duty parts, what liability do we have? Okay, you know, you're really the, 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 the one that always stands out there when you're, when you're um, on the parts side and you're, and you're selling it is the distribution because you have to move it around to get it to places. And the commercial oil exposure um, uh, always is a uh, uh, one of those liabilities that you have to be aware of. Uh, just the simple moving of parts, um, the the big um, trucks sometimes they're moved on, or even the speed delivery of needing a, a part in a rush. So uh, the commercial auto uh, liability exposure and the responsibility of that is is a, is a big one. But but from but the one that really um, gets you to is the manufacturing. Uh, of it. And you say manufacturing, I'm, I'm not a manufacturer. Well, um, you can become the manufacturer though, uh, if the people who did manufacture it uh, lose their, um, their business or um, you happen to be the first one that brings it into the country. I, I'm, I'm not an expert on all the Canadian laws, but in, in the US uh, for certain, if you're the first one that brings it into the US, uh, then you in essence become uh, the person responsible for it. So, um, it, yeah, when you're distributing parts, it, you, it, one of the key aspects is to see whether or not you own the liability associated with manufacturing their, uh, that part or not. Yeah, and that really brings to mind how important it is to choose manufacturers and suppliers that are reputable, that have their financial house in order, their insurance is in place. You don't want to be that person who basically you touched it last, so then you're legally responsible. Now, let's shift our focus to the repair shop for a moment. A lot of our listeners are independent repair shop owners. Um, what do they need to know about insurance? Maybe tell us something that we don't know. Okay, well, um, they, you know, a lot of times um, they're, they're sitting around uh, working on a car and you're modifying a component uh, beyond what the OEM standards would say, or, uh, or it might even be silent on it. So I, I, there's a lot more attention uh, gained by the industry right now and the courts on whether or not you're following OEM uh, instructions. I mean, it, um, a Hyundai uh, who does some in this space, but they're definitely more on the on the on the uh, personal uh, or the private passenger side. They were one of the manufacturers that came out with very little instructions on how to repair their vehicles. But most of the other manufacturers are are have been creating volumes and volumes of information that you can get on demand uh, online. Uh, through various sources. Yes, you can get it from them, but there's other sources to get it from as well. And it is uh, very important to, to follow those uh, procedures or instructions because if you don't and you repair it and then, and then one of your customers happens to be in an accident, then, um, then it can, uh, you don't have the ability to always fall back on deferring it back to the OEM 
manufacturer. It once again, you can become the manufacturer. Here you are just trying to repair a vehicle and you can become the manufacturer. So it is important. Right. We, uh, a couple of years ago, we had a tragedy here uh, in, a, in the town of Humboldt and uh, it was a hockey team, high school hockey team and a transport truck crossed an intersection and, and hit the bus. And there was many deaths, many injuries. Well, once the, you know, they, they reviewed the accident, they went through that truck, even though it was driver error that caused the accident, oh. they went through that heavy truck and trailer with a fine tooth comb and anything that was not up to the specifications required by the commercial vehicle transportation authority, uh, they were penalized heavily for that. And people went to prison. It was a big, big deal. So that was a real world example of what you're talking about, where if you happen to have been the one who repaired that truck or trailer just before the accident, you want to hope that everything that was done in your shop was done to OE specifications. Yeah, well, how many times you've known somebody that where somebody will bring the part to them and say, hey, put this on for us or whatever. That, that, that used to be uh, more of a common practice or at least uh, acceptable, but it would be something I'd be aware of today as well because you're being viewed as the professional. They aren't necessarily, you are the professional. And so therefore, by you putting it on there, you're deeming that the part is okay. It, it, you're, you're not, um, you're not, it, you know, it, it, yes, you might be able to write up a contract that they assume liability, but I, I'm going to tell you, uh, you're deeming that that part's okay at that point in time. And it gets back to your point. Uh, the, what I thought was interesting about what you just said is uh, all the different examples like that, where a lot of times you think, well, you repaired something, nothing's happened in a year or two, you're okay. It can be three, five years later. It doesn't have to be right now. Anyone who repaired it or touched it, they go back and scrutinize whether or not they did what they were supposed to do when they were working on it. So what's changing in the trucking industry when it comes to commercial insurance? Um, well, I, I would tell you that, um, that the, on, on, what you see in the, in the trucking area is you see a lot of separation um, uh, and a lot of, of people that are, that are specializing. I would tell you that, you're starting to see the same thing in the insurance industry, um, where people are trying to pick parts and specialize in it and not be everything. And so with regards to that, um, you've, got, you've got people that are, that are focusing on providing certain coverages and certain niches. But what I will tell you what I haven't seen though, uh, uh, unfortunately, as much as I thought I would, is that, because uh, I consider myself in two industries. I'm in the automotive industry, and, and in the um, insurance industry. And we both get labeled by the bad actors in both of our industries. <laughs> you know, we, those, everyone wants to bring those up when they talk about us at a, with, with, uh, out in public settings or whatever. But, you know, we know we're, truth of the matter is, we're more like the ones that are, are trying to lead the industry. And what, what I haven't been seeing as much of is um, the investing in uh, insurance companies in automotive technology. Um, you know, they, uh, they, aren't, they aren't hiring people that could work in your shop uh, that work for them. In other words, it, 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 it seems like to me you'd want to have somebody who has uh, worked on, uh, been a certified mechanic uh, who is actually helping you guys handle claims or defend your liability lawsuits. And the, the specialization in the insurance industry doesn't seem to be focused on, on using technology to benefit this group, which is great for me because we are, but I, I'm just saying, unfortunately, I'd, I'd rather be competing with others that were doing that because uh, it, what it does is the better the competition is, we all get better. And, 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 but that's not what we're seeing right now. Um, they are specializing, but they're, they're, they're having to use a lot more, uh, electronic uh, estimating for, to handle claims, but it, it, they still requires to have somebody who's actually done that, <laughs> you know, that has worked in that shop, in my opinion, to be able to properly handle it. So we need better representation in insurance from our industry. So anybody out there who's deciding that maybe it's time to get off the tools, maybe you should think about insurance. Tell me, what's a mistake that, that's easily corrected that most of us make when we're talking about insurance? Yeah, I, 
I would tell you the first one right off the bat is, hey, I want apples to apples quote. Can you, I just want, you know, I want you to bring in apples to apples quote. What you have done is you've just um, eliminated anyone's concept that they need to fight and, and show you value. All they got to do is bring in a price. And, and, and so they're, they're, really, they're really in their mind, the insurance person's thinking, hey, they're not really going to, they're not really a coverage buyer. They don't really no, need to know whether or not my services are really that good. I'll put a pretty picture of uh, a heavy duty truck on my proposal and they'll think that I really know their business. As opposed to, uh, I, I think the more, a, a more astute way to go about it was, is, is to say, hey, this is what I have, but what do I need? I want you to earn my business by showing what value you can bring. And, and, and that's just a whole different level of conversation then. And then you get to find out, because then the insurance provider is thinking, hey, all I'm going to do is throw them a price. So then they start deciding whether they really want to work on your business or not. It does. It brings on a whole new uh, uh, level of interest. And, uh, and you, get, you get to have somebody show you maybe some insight they wouldn't otherwise show you. Uh, rather than apples to apples, it, 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 it really is, it is, it really infuriates somebody who is trying to bring value to a, a, a consumer. Right. And in that scenario with the apples to apples, you are relying on whoever laid out the first apple. Uh, <laughs> did, they, did they cover everything that you need? Do they have your best interests at heart? And then you're forcing everyone else to lower their standards down to that original apple. So yeah, I can see where that is a mistake. Of course, you know, I think there's a an inherent fear that if you just leave it open-ended, they're going to run up your bill with unnecessary insurance. So how do you make sure that you get what you need, but you're not overpaying? Well, well, what you can't is by, I honestly, by getting multiple quotes and, and, and I'm going to tell you, multiple quotes don't always get it either. Um, it, it, it is getting a relationship. I mean, how do you get most of the business you get? Why do you get referrals you get? It's because you develop a relationship with somebody you trust. It is important to find somebody that in this area that you can relate to, whether it's online or whether it's in person in your shop, there, there's got to be somebody that speaks to you that gets you. And then if they do I, and you feel like you're really comfortable with them, I probably wouldn't worry about shopping every year. But every third year, it might be a good idea to make sure they still have your vested interests because the, their focus or they could be pulled different directions as well. But it definitely, um, I would, uh, uh, I would, I would tell you at the other thing is, is you have the ability when you get a proposal, not just to write a check or to agree to it. You can say, Hey, I'd like to take this out. I'd like to take that out. And, and you know what? That's a great time to find out whether there's really any value or there or not, because if they don't have any problem taking that out, it wasn't necessary to begin with, <laughs> or they don't know. Which either one's bad. <laughs> yeah, both of those are bad. That's great. So you know the insurance industry inside out, and you're focused on the trucking industry. What keeps you up at night? Oh, uh, by far. I, I mean, um, it's it's whether or not um, uh, people are are doing the the repairs the way we want them to. I, I, I'll tell you on on the on the tire side, you can you can do what you think is everything right. And, and you still get pulled into a lawsuit or a potential lawsuit. Like you, you, you gave that example of the accident that killed a, a, a team or whatever, or killed a, a lot of individuals there. Um, you can do everything right, but you still get scrutinized heavy. Um, and um, if, if, there, if one of your customers is in an accident, if, if, it, if there is uh, somebody gets severely injured or dies, um, it is then scrutinized, and and that's where um, my my thing of it is is that today a lot of carriers um, will have a tendency to pay that or just um, to try to get out of it as opposed to digging into it and and fighting it on your behalf. Hey, there the losses are going to be on your loss run, and you're going to pay for them the next three to five years, okay? Um, you know, so I, I, I think it's important. Um, you know, what, what worries me is that is that it is worth defending 
the people of this industry who are working hard to earn an any uh, earn their income and uh, build their value and their brand. And so defending that is pretty important. What it does, it, what keeps me up is is making sure we're at the top of our game to do that, to to, to bring that level of service, and that and that the whole industry as a uh, from the insurance as a as a whole can do that for other people in the heavy duty. We've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about heavy duty parts, manufacturing, dis distribution, and repair. If there's one thing you want listeners to take away from today's conversation, what's that one thing? Uh, hey, your brand is on the line every time uh, you do a repair job or you do work for anyone else. Your expertise and your worth ethic is what allows you to get that work. And I think you need um, to be that much of a scrutiny when you're working with somebody from my, the other industry. I'm in the insurance industry uh, because it really does matter. It matters to you and your outcome. Um, uh, you know, they... You might even be surprised. A lot of times you can save people money and you definitely do in the long run, uh, but, but, but make sure that, that you hold somebody else to that same high standards that you hold yourself to what allows you to be successful. You've been watching HDPR Live. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin. And today we've been speaking with David Willett from ProSite Specialty Insurance. To learn more, go to ProSiteSpecialty.com. Links are in the show notes. David, thank you for coming on HDPR Live today. Thank you, Jamie. You can watch our next video and don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel.